All right, module number three, we are rolling right along. Targeting your people. Let's go. So the fundamentals of audience targeting, first things first, the struggle. The struggle to be seen and heard, as we've said, has never been more real just because of the volume of content. Yes, competition and all that choice and all of that shop around behavior that we talked about, but also just straight up the amount of content being served or sent or, you know, forced upon us as consumers all day long is gigantic. It's the largest, it's most enormous it's ever been in human history. You are being shown so much, whether you like it or not all day long. Even if you're not on social media, you're just completely bombarded by commercials and ads and video and everything. So we've got to know where our market is and we've got to go where they are based on the platform. If they're driving in the car all all day long, you know, down the 401, maybe you should be buying some billboards. But if they're in LinkedIn all day, great. We need to show up there or TikTok or Pinterest, wherever it is. So we've got to know them well. From there, we have to segment, target, and personalize our content so that it matters not just to the right people, but to the ones that we know are going to actually take action and buy from us. And when we think about segmentation, it's, you know, kind of sometimes a little confusing to think about, well, how am I going to pick and and who is not a target for my product or service? Well, if we can segment them into different groups or even into that one, you know, really clear customer avatar that we define, um, that's a great starting point. But if you think about the girl on the top versus the guy on the bottom, I hate to generalize, but they probably have very different interests. We can just see it from photos and different ages and behaviors and values and expectations from the brands that they're going to buy from or engage with or subscribe to or follow and and et cetera. So how did this all begin? Well, let's look at this fun little chart. Let me move my head. The evolution of content targeting and segmentation. I just love this because I'm a nerd, but also because it speaks to where we've gotten to in digital marketing. And what that means is how much power is at our fingertips today as DIY marketers, business owners, etc. Originally, we were lucky and grateful and excited that we could show our content and ad campaigns to the right people. I can serve this up to just women who live in Denver. Amazing. And have a dog or, you know, used to live in Greece. Wow. Well, then we were able to send our content or show our content and ad campaigns to the right people at the right time when they were online in the morning at 6 to 8 a.m. when they're heavy using our Pinterest feed or their Pinterest feed and seeing our content or when they're, you know, showing up on our our, uh, website like crazy in that shopping season at the end of the year for back to school. Well, that's obviously we're going to be running our contests or freebies or, you know, campaigns. From there, we were given the power to send or show our content and ad campaigns to the right people at the right time for the right reason. Because you were on my website last week, but you didn't buy. Because you expressed interest in hearing from us about only our fashion, not our art. Because you are um, craving new recipes and tell you told us somehow or other by engaging with our content or watching specific how-to videos that you really need support in the kitchen. And here's that. Finally, we're able to send the right content and ad campaigns to the right people at the right time for the right reason. So the right kind of content, what does that mean? Well, it's the kind that's actually going to resonate deeply, connect with me emotionally, and get me to act on it. Big difference than the kind of stuff that we used to just shove down people's throats. Again, this goes back to their biggest fears, deepest desires, wildest dreams, knowing them, speaking to them, solving their problems, all really important understanding them. So our audiences, hopes, fears, dreams, frustrations, and those that aren't just the surface level assumptions. I think that you like to walk your dog at night and thus you must need a new collar. You seem to eat out a lot, so I should probably tell you about my wine. Well, not necessarily. Thinking about it on a deeper level than just sending me a advertisement for dresses for older ladies. So we got, we've got to go deeper. I did this in my very first course for a hypothetical avatar that I created based on a real person whose name was Janine. And I knew as I was doing public relations and and social media for a neighborhood, uh, and they had 85 member businesses within that neighborhood. And I, and I heard from them often. They were very vocal. 
And I knew that Janine was frustrated that she was not getting anywhere with this thing called the Facebook or even just media coverage and, you know, notoriety compared to Megan down the street who was getting tons of attention and what the heck and what am I doing wrong? So I built a course called PR Pioneers, my very first course more than a decade ago for Janine. And I didn't know much about her. I didn't know where she lived, what kind of pets she had. I didn't know if she was married, but I used her and her name and I had a vision of her and I went so deep. I could tell you what magazines she reads, pretend, and where she wants to travel and whether, you know, her divorced husband is a pain in the butt or not and whether she has kids and and whether red wine or white wine. I just pretended that I knew her so well that again, I could speak so intimately. Tim Ferriss did this. He talks about it in his very famed book, The 4-Hour Workweek, where when he was starting to transition into that 4-Hour Workweek idea, we'll say it being an author and writing his very famous blog, um, people told him he was crazy and that he wasn't going to get anywhere with it. And he said, no, you're wrong. I think people are into this idea of remote work, working smarter, not harder, etc. And I'm going to write this blog and write this book, actually, for my four best friends for these dudes that I know it will resonate with. And sure enough, he caught a whole lot more bees as a result. Final example I will give is a home builder that I worked with in my client days not too long ago. And this was a multifamily builder, so a developer that was building really funky, cool apartments. Still has, always has. They've been cutting edge and really like push the envelope um, in their branding of their buildings, in their ad campaigns, and in their independent spirit. Really neat company. So they had this building where they were, and they named it Nude, N-U-D-E, and it was super sexy. And it was targeted at millennials who wanted to live in the inner city and didn't have a car and didn't care that they didn't have an underground parking spot, but they needed bike parking. And all of those, let's say, stereotypical millennial, um, single person, 20-something needs were addressed in both the building and in the marketing and even the name. The next building they made was called Neon. Really cool buildings and ideas and company. However, at one point they came to me and the issue was that in fact, it was a ton of offshore investors, parents of the 55 to 65 plus category and not at all interesting millennial, cool, eco-minded, you know, people and, and, and uh, uh, singles that were buying these things recent grads, etc. So they thought, we're doing this all wrong. We've got to reposition everything and start targeting those people, the 90% of the people that are actually buying these things. And I said, no, 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 you don't. Because the reason those other people are being drawn in is because you are so successfully branding yourself to the people that they know, their kids or their renters or the people that this investor group wants in that building. You're doing that so well that you've attracted others. My point is, don't worry if having one Janine feels way too specific. If you do a good job of speaking authentically, you're not using her name or Tim's not speaking to his four friends, but he's writing in a way and creating content in a way that resonates with a lot of people. So from here in our segmenting, targeting and personalized content, we can think about it in terms of demographic, psychographic or behavioral segmentation. And these are sort of the basic categories of this. And you can map this out on paper and you're going to do some of that, but uh, we're going to just kind of cover what each of these categories are. When you think geographic, Of course, country, city, even language. Yes, what region, basics, top line data. Demographic, same thing. Age, gender, maybe income, education, life stage, occupation. If you think about when you're in Facebook's audience builder, which we're gonna get there, you have the ability for the most part, unless you're in a special advertising category like housing or politics, etc., you can still segment on those types of things. Uh, In some cases, you're not encouraged to segment by gender because it can be presumptuous or prejudiced or um, isolating. Uh, That's why housing is included in a special category and this may expand. But either way, even if it's not about building your actual audiences within the platform, you still need to think about it in advance. The demographic factors are super important. From there, as we've talked about, those all important, in fact, integral psychographic factors, their lifestyles, interests, opinions, what do they believe in? What are their values? What do they need to hear from you? 
And then finally, this is a really cool, um, almost more tactical uh, piece of our, te- our segmenting that we're, we're able to do now thanks to the, the science behind it or the platforms that allow us to t- target based on past purchases. Intent, did they click on your product page, put it in their cart, but not get to checkout? Great, we can retarget them. But that's not something that is a psychographic factor that I'm determining. That's something the platform is helping me do thanks to the pixel that's tracking that. Their intent, their buyer stage, their user status, maybe their engagement. Did they watch your video? Did they watch it for three seconds or all the way to the end? Did they watch three videos? Great, that's a hot lead. Let's build an audience for that. Those are people that are being segmented based on behaviors. Really cool. We can do that in email marketing as well, which we talk extensively about in our email marketing course based on whether they opened, whether they downloaded that ebook that you sent them, whether they completed that course, or whether they only want to hear about this or that, or they didn't open, so you're going to tag them accordingly and remind them. There's so many different behavioral segmentation opportunities today. From here, building that ideal customer persona. It's your turn. Remember, who are they? Great, but who are they really? Defining your audience based on those demographic and psychographic connection factors. Personas can be based on many, many things, but really thinking about their emotional needs here is super important. From there, build your lists or your hypothetical lists. And if you already have a mass email list, now is the time to tag and segment them accordingly. And maybe they've never told you before, but just about every email marketing service today has the ability for you to go back and add a form or put uh, together an email that says, what do you want to hear from us going forward? Where you can click a radio button or a drop down option that says, I want to hear from you once a week. No, I want to hear from you once a month. I only want to hear from you about your men's fashions. I only want to hear from you about art, not science (laughs) Um, or culture or food or whatever it is you're selling. So exactly the right content is that fourth line of that, you know, the stages of segmenting and and, uh, targeting that we're now able to do. And it is probably the most important part because even if you're reaching me on the right platform at the right time, you know, with the kind of content that you think I might like, but you're doing it with, no, sorry, the right time, the right place, you get it. With the content that I don't want to hear, I'm out. It's not for me. Unsubscribe, unfollow, block, right? Okay. Uh, So here you go. First exercises in your workbook, identifying and understanding your audience and then the persona building and then the detailed kind of uh, piece of that. So on a high level, the audience that you're aiming to reach in your content marketing can be summed up as what? Just give us the broad strokes here of the people that need you. Now, what are those pain points? Why do I need you? What are the top three if you can narrow them down? And then more importantly, what are the three ways you can solve this for me and your people? And then what things do I desperately desire or want to feel if I'm your target audience? What is it that you can do? Let's get a little bit more specific. Build your Janine. Build one Janine. And if you need to build three, that's totally fine. You might have three very distinct arms of your business and you do need to create three detailed fictional personas. Or maybe they're real people. That's okay but I encourage you to try not to create eight or 10 because this happens very often. And I promise you, when you go to create content for those eight, 10 people, you're going to be like, oh my God, this, these three people could actually all really benefit from this e-newsletter or this post. And these three people could really benefit. So don't go too big. You can always add in more personas later. And then finally, the offer and audience refinement piece here. What is the problem you're trying to solve and how can you um, instill that sense of problem solved or transformation uh, for that customer or prospect? What do they want to gain? What do they want to feel at the end of working with you or buying from you? And what objections might they have that can further help you refine that offer or the copy and the communications tools that you're going to use to sell them on it? Next up, module four, we will talk about the specific audience types that we're going to create in Facebook Business Manager and then the other platforms from there.